We are running so behind on fall planting. I don't know what happened. Uh, this time last year, I had my garlic already in the ground. Um, I had my fall planting. We're recording this in October, 2022. And this time last year, I already had this stuff in the ground by September, 2021. I did do a really good garlic harvest. And I'm gonna just show you this. You want to get your garlic, organic garlic, and you can buy this at the grocery store. I bought this at the grocery store. This is a just a foam plate, and I've put a little water in the bottom, and I've set my garlic in it so that the roots can start to come back alive. Now, when those roots start growing for me, I will separate the bulb and trying to keep as much of this skin on as I can, I will bury that clove. And that's how I've been doing my garlic. And this year is a new addition. I found some elephant garlic. It is huge. Look how big that garlic is. Um, the kind of garlic I have here is hard neck. They've got hard neck and they've got soft neck. The soft neck garlic will store longer but in our case, we eat a lot of garlic. We add it to a lot of things and I make powders out of it and add it to so many of my canned goods and stuff like that. We go through it. So I'm not worried about storing enough garlic for a year really. But this time last year, I had my garlic already sprouting up out of the dirt in September. Now we are in October and I say we because thank you guys. You guys are watching my videos, you are subscribing, and I do appreciate that very much. So I'm including this, you guys, in my journey, but that means the bad stuff too. So you and I are running really behind on our fall planting. Let's get to it. Guys, you remember the brandy wine tomatoes that I was so excited to try out there they are um i think i'm i can't be disappointed in them too hard because they were part of second garden and i think if i would have had these seeds and started them in the spring this would have been a really great tomato and i i grew them midsummer and put them out here for second garden and as you can see they're not doing so well but we've also cooled off quite considerably for this time of year for out here i just think they're stunted they're not going to do what we wanted them to do but that's okay we've always got next year to try the brandy wine tomatoes but it is starting to die back now so i will be able to cut this back today and I'm so relieved of that because this has been kind of in my way um, this is why we plant our gardens a little bit better had I known how big the asparagus ferns would get and you can't really mess with them for the first two to three years um, after that when they start with their little asparagus sprouts you cut that and that's what you eat that's asparagus but the first two to three years, they say you want to let it burn out and get big and do, do what it does. What a mess. Now, it takes three years on average to establish an asparagus bed. And obviously this is, uh, I think this was our third year. So we won't have to have this going out of control next year, uh, which will be really, really great but if you are planting an asparagus bed just be mindful of where you're putting it because you got to put up with that for the first two to three years okay guys look at that boy i've been wanting to do that for quite some time so now we've got this kind of cleaned up and opened up this is the one that the mole was going through so it's also kind of been stirred up for us already and I don't see any more signs of the mole. I don't know if they just went away or what. Usually that's not how it works in mole world, but maybe we got lucky guys. This, there's a Thai pepper plant. These two little plants here. This is the one 
me show you how little this is. This is the one that the peppers are just that big, guys, like a little Tic Tac, but they're super, super hot. So I am going to take at least one, if not both of those, and put in a pot because I will be overwintering pepper plants and that may be a different video. Over here, we need to plan what we are going to save or leave alone, I should say. I'm not really saving anything at this point. But what we're going to leave alone and what we are going to get out of the way. So as you can see, this is a lot more cleared out. Uh, back in, I believe, August, I pulled a bunch of the tomato plants and I didn't replant anything at that time because I was worried about the mole issue. This jigsaw here, if you, if you watched our summer in review, you know that I was not impressed with the jigsaw. Look, this is as big as the plant got. I'm just not interested. It's pretty. The leaves are purple, white, and green and very pretty, but who cares? I'm, I'm trying to grow food here. Now this is a little jalapeno plant. We have several other jalapeno plants in other gardens. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of our way also. Okay, as part of second garden, you guys can see this here probably. I had planted a squash and it started to come up. I doubt I see one squash from this. It's cooled off so much quicker than usual here, guys. I did plant some rutabaga right next to that. And honestly, guys, I forgot that I even planted that. I came over here to pull weeds the other day and I was like, well, what is this? That is rutabaga, which I have never grown. And quite frankly, I'm not sure what I do with a rutabaga, but we're gonna figure that out. Now, over here we have a bell pepper plant that we're going to leave. And the basil, I have really given the basil a haircut. I'm just gonna leave it that there as it is. And marigolds in the corner. I add the marigolds to the gardens because they are supposed to ward off. I think they actually entice one kind of bug that wants to come here and live and eat the bad bugs, I think is how that works. We also need to add a row of carrots in here and I'm going to be using the plank method. That's where I'm gonna get the soil really wet. I'm gonna put a row of carrot seeds down and then I'm gonna place the board on top of it and leave it there for three to six or seven days. Once the carrots start sprouting underneath that board, I will remove the board. Now I've tried carrots all different ways and this seems to be the most successful for me. I'm just gonna take my little garden hand rake and I have just hosed this all down really good. And I'm just gonna stir the top of the, the dirt a little bit so it'll be loose enough that when I go to cover these seeds, I can just kind of sweep that over. Let me find my carrot seeds, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Maybe this is why we're behind on our fall planting. What I'm gonna use is I'm um, gonna do a row of, the, this is a two for one from the Dollar General store and it's Danvers half long. So they're not gonna be a really, really huge carrot to begin with. I am just going to sprinkle a line of those right there. Then we have red cord chantonet. I'm guessing on, on how you say this one, guys. This looks like a short and fat but like really fat carrot. So this is from Fairy Morse. And I'm just gonna do the same thing here, right next to that line.
and I just use them very sparingly. The carrot seeds are a very small seed, and um, it seems to me one seed makes a carrot, which is great, but I don't believe their germination rate is extremely high because you would think that I would just be crowding everything here. Uh, when these sprout up, if they sprout up, uh, you will find I'm not crowding too much. I might want to thin them out, but I'm just gonna sweep a little dust over that and kind of pat it in with my hand is fine. No special tool required. And then this is just an old board that I had laying around. It, yeah, it is painted barn red. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place that over the top of where I just planted those seeds. I'm going to, you know, they say it takes about six to 10 days for anything to sprout up under there, but I will be looking within three days, <laughs> expecting little sprouts of carrots to come up here. That's just how I kind of roll with this. But we've got our carrots down. I've got two different types of beets I'm gonna try. This is all trial and error. And you know, even when we get a particular type of plant that works well in our area, it may do absolutely wonderful one year, the next year, not so much. So unless you're really having great luck with one particular type of something, I wouldn't be afraid to experiment or always changing it up. Uh, it just ensures that you're gonna get something a little bit better. As you can see, the carrot board is over here and along this rabbit fencing, which by the way, the rabbit fencing did work well. We had rabbits and they were taking advantage. We put the rabbit fencing up and that's no longer a problem. But what I'm gonna do here is basically the same thing, but with the beets, I will dig a little deeper than I did for the carrots. Not much. Um, the rule on the seeds, basically, you wanna bury it a seed and a half from the size of the seed, if that makes sense. Like for instance, if you have a seed that's one inch long, I don't know what that would be, but the, you would bury it one and a half inches deep then. And I'm going to put our Ruby Queens over here. Now I have tried to soak, um, soak these in water 24 hours before planting. And I cannot say that I actually made them sprout better, if you will. Um, it seems like if I just throw them out there and honestly kind of forget about them, they seem to do better. So I'm, I'm almost convinced at this point that my gardens would like to be ignored half the time, which is fine <laughs> because I forget things a lot. Now over here, we will do the Chioga. So I know that I've got two different types of beets along this rabbit fencing on this side. And you see, this is not a very large seed. So, just gonna spread that in there. And I may actually save a few out of this packet. The only gardens that I'm going to plant for fall planting, colder weather coming on, is this one. Maybe a little bit in the fenced in garden next to this one, and the one behind the home house because the pepper garden, the one behind the owl, we're, we're going to turn its world upside down. So I've, I'm trying not to put any more extra plants in that one. Okay guys, we're back over here by the rutabaga. And if I could get you set down here, you can see that we have this um, tomato cage left over from the tomato I had here. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of grind this dirt up. Yeah, there's pine needles everywhere. Welcome to North Carolina. We'll pull these weeds up. 
And I'm just gonna put a couple of pea seeds in the ground here. And these, these I bought at Walmart. They were 50 cents. Um, they're supposed to be little marvels. So we will see how the little marvels, how marvelous they are. And again, I'm just gonna kind of put them around here a little bit deeper. It does have a, a bigger seed than what we were dealing with with the carrots and the beets. But we'll just uh, spread them in there, let them roll down, make sure everybody's covered up. I did wet this area that we are planting in, guys. I came in here with the hose and I wet all of this down, obviously, because it's muddy, before we started planting the seeds. Now that I've got the seeds down, I will water this for sure, and I will lightly water where the beets are. I don't want to make the beet seeds go down into the ground further. I almost wonder if we should use a board on those like we do the carrots. Before we leave this garden, um, I do want to, I've got a pot here. This is a ghost pepper plant. And when the mole was wreaking havoc in here, this was laying completely on its side, but putting off, putting off, putting off so many of my ghost peppers. Up oh, right there, I accidentally just grabbed one. It's not red yet, but it's full of ghost peppers and it keeps putting off more and more ghost peppers. The mole had dug like a circle around this plant. It was amazing. I'm going to leave this here. As you can see, I've kind of stilted it up. There is one of the chai hot pepper plants right beneath it. But instead of disturbing this anymore, I'm going to come over here. There's another um, Thai hot pepper plant right here. And I've got my short handled shovel here. It's gonna kind of uh, start a circle around this one. Kind of a wide circle because I want to make sure that I can get as much of the roots to this plant as I can. And see guys, it's coming right up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna dump some of this dirt out, make it a little bit, it was a little bit too deep with dirt. And I'm gonna grab this hot Thai pepper plant out of here as easily as I can and place it in this pot. And we are going to let this one grow. Normally, when you overwinter pepper plants, you cut them at the V here and we'll go over all of that when I go to overwintering some of my plants. Um, but this one is such a small plant that I'm not, I'm not really going to trim it down to overwinter it. I'm just gonna let it grow inside the greenhouse just as it is, cause it's such a small plant and these peppers are so small also, but they are so hot, just a little bit goes a long, long way with this. And I was really impressed with this one. So now we've got this one potted up. I'm doing with some of the things that are going to go live in the greenhouse as I am putting them in pots and I'm putting them out in front of the greenhouse, not inside because my greenhouse walls don't roll up and open or anything. It's just a simple hoop house. Um, so it's got to cool down and stay cooled down for anything to be happy in there and not get immediately dried out because it's so hot and dry in there right now. But there will be a lot of plants living in the greenhouse this winter. And this guy is one of them. Guys, you can see what I mean with this hot mess. I went and bought some trees. We're gonna tear up the pepper garden this fall and fence all the way around it. And then I have bought some fruit trees that we're going to do the esprale, espalier, that French technique where you trellis up your fruit trees. And I have two peach trees, two different types of peach trees, a fig tree, a pomegranate tree, and 
Oh, the plum tree over here. I knew there was another tree, I couldn't think. Cole, they, we took you on the garden tour at the Triumph Palace over in New Bern. Well, they had a plant cell, so we had to go to that. We dipped into the Triumph Palace, we grabbed our plants that we wanted, and we got out of there. But I did get my pomegranate from there and a guava fruit which is a tree, but it's going to grow more like a bush and would not be so good for the espalier type of planting. So I'm not quite sure where we're gonna put that yet, but I couldn't leave it there, so. Alrighty guys, we are behind the home house now, and this, if you recall from my last garden tour, is where I, well, there's some still remaining. I didn't get it all little nugget of turmeric turmeric there is an r in turmeric i just don't seem to say it i don't know what that's about but what we already have here in front is my spinach is growing guys i can't believe that so i've brought some dark green spinach to add to that row and i planted two cabbages here already this is a is a moonflower that's just about had it. All of this stuff here. Look here, guys. Seeds for new, new green beans. Right there, homestead beans. But anyways, uh, what we will do here is I have a few more cabbages that I want to plant. I do have an Oshawanda. I started this from seed and it has a weed in it also. Weeds are prolific here guys um i don't know it's probably just gonna die i don't know i don't remember why i was doing ashwagandha but i'm gonna go ahead and plant it in here and see what happens huh this is a brussels sprout guys i have tried brussels sprouts and i can get the seedlings and I can get a really good looking plant out of it some years, but I've never been able to bring it to the point where I actually harvest any Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to just come around here and plant this puppy right here and see if it wants to use this trellis. And this one, the bugs have already started to enjoy this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and plant it. We don't know, it may grow past it. And guys, this one looks like an artichoke, so I'm gonna take it across and plant it in this herb garden underneath the willow tree real quick. We'll get to that in a second. That looks like baby spinach. This one, I don't have, I don't have a label stick in it. Okay guys, let's go over here to the willow tree and plant our, I believe this is a globe artichoke. But guys, as far as this is concerned, I did come in here and sprinkle in cilantro seeds the other day. I have sprinkled in other herb seeds and I just broadcasted them and I'm very excited to see what happens here next spring. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to more or less broadcast some seeds. I'm not going to be very um, organized with it. I know you guys are shocked at that, aren't you? What I have here is dark green spinach leaf spinach seeds. And I'm just going to scratch this up a little bit over here. I'm just gonna broadcast those and re-scratch it. <laughs> now then what I have here is uh, mescaline. It's a sweet salad mix. And I'm just also going to broadcast that on the other side of the spinach. So maybe we will have some interesting lettuces to and I'm just doing this the same way I just did the spinach. Um, just kind of stirring up the dirt, broadcasting those. Wish them good luck and stir them up. We might be really, really surprised at how well that works. 
Guys, I'm not a master gardener. I just like to spread seeds, that's all. We also went and put another artichoke in the herb garden where I told you that I have been broadcasting, randomly broadcasting other herb seeds. And herb seeds are generally so tiny. I have not been like putting them in the dirt or patting them down. I just broadcasted them. Um, and I mentioned that I'm not a master gardener. I just like to spread the seeds. And that is true testament to it because I literally just threw the seeds out there. So we will be very excited to see what happens next spring with this herb garden behind or underneath the willow tree. For a couple of years, I was going out every spring trying to buy the bulbs to daffodils. They don't sell them in spring because you have to plant your daffodil bulbs in the fall. So if you want this bright, sunny, usually one of the first things that comes up out of the ground and blooms and it's beautiful and bright, you want this in your yard, you need to be planting these bulbs in the fall. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you're learning something as we go. Uh, that's the whole purpose of it is I'm learning, you're learning, we're learning. If you have anything that I need to know, please leave it in the comment section below. This is actually the first time I focused on fall planting back home. There's not really a bunch of fall planting because it gets so cold there, a frost will kill. We do have the hard frost. So after we've grown our corn and our tomatoes and our okra and green beans, we're done for the season. Out here, usually we have a more prolonged season. However, this year, like I said, it's been in the 40s at night already. It's just now in the beginning of October and it's getting to be in the highs or around the 70s maybe we reach 80s so it's very strange weather this year in 2022 but we will see where this leads us hope that you enjoyed this video i hope this video finds you doing well and hopefully you're not as far behind on your fall planting as i was thank you for joining me and getting my stuff done and learning with me along the way until the next video take care